Hi everyone, Stepan here. In this game, in this video, I'm going to show you my first ever London system in which I got to play the most famous trap in the London system, uh, which is incredible. I mean, obviously I, I was prepared for it. I was prepared for most of the early tricks in the opening, but I never expected to get it in in my first game. And I have to say that uh, when I showed this game to one of my best friends who plays the London system all the time, he told me that he'd never managed to get it in. Nobody ever fell for the trap against him. Thus, I owe him a beer. I still do uh, for this game. Anyway, uh, this is one of the most famous ways to win with the London system. So if you play it, uh, hopefully you know it already. If you don't know it, then yeah, you will be uh, more experienced after, after this video. Okay, so I'm playing an 1800 player. I went d4, he went knight f6, I played bishop f4, this is the this is the move order I prefer. Now, I, I've been playing the London system with black all the time, and even though I honestly dislike the opening, I dislike playing against it, uh, well, I decided to play it myself, because it has to be annoying for other people too. d5, e3 c5 c3 this is one of the main lines uh, after knight c6 knight to d2 it is still possible to play bishop to f5 that should be better uh, than e6 better it's in my opinion easier to play that's the way i would play it uh, with the black pieces my but my opponent went e6 which is very respectable okay the other knight comes out to f3 and it's all about the battle for the e5 square. Whoever can control e5 should be uh, should be better, especially if white is the one who, who manages to get the knight into e5. So bear that in mind. Uh, bishop to d6. I don't want to trade off any pieces, so bishop to g3. While my king is still on e1 and my rook is still on h1, I obviously don't mind an exchange on g3, because then I will have pressure on h7 in conjunction with my bishop on d3. My opponent castles, which is the main move. And now bishop to d3. And this is the starting point uh, of the main line of the d5 London. Uh, here there are three most popular moves. b6 is by far the most popular. Leads to very sharp lines. Uh, I will get to this uh, well very soon in, in one of my videos. Queen e7 is the second most popular. And... Rook e8 is the third most popular. Now, my friend who plays the London system all the time always faces rook e8 in this position. He'd never faced anything else. My opponent played queen e7, and now this leads to a very, very famous trap white could try and set up. Now, white plays knight e5. That's the best move. You have a threat in this position. Your threat is to play f4. And if this knight is ever taken, <clears throat> then obviously you take with the pawn. You make sure this knight moves away, you play f4, and there will be constant pressure on h7. So taking the knight is really not advisable. What most people play to fall into the trap is knight to d7. Now, uh, after knight to d7, uh, white can force either a draw, if black knows what he is doing, or white can simply win outright. And here is the way to do it. Now. Uh, I hope you're familiar with the Greek gift sacrifice, that's bishop taking on h7 or on h2, and in conjunction with this queen and with the knight coming to g5, that can lead to checkmate. So that's the premise of the, of the trap. So what you do here is you want to exploit the positioning of the black queen. Now this is a slightly uh, higher rated version of the Greek gift. You take on d7. Okay, uh, most players are going to be developing their bishop because they want it on d7 anyway. So bishop takes d7. And now a simple... Uh, well, you, you want to drag the queen to the optimal square to exploit its positioning. So you want the queen on c5, the black queen. Why do you want the black queen on c5? Well, you want to be playing knight e4 and queen h5. And if the queen is on h5... Uh, your knight cannot be taken. Obviously, the black queen is hanging. So what you do here is you take the bishop, queen takes bishop, you take on c5, queen takes on c5, and now you simply sacrifice. Bishop takes h7. This has to be taken. If it's not taken, then queen h5 wins the game on the spot. So king takes. Queen h5 check. 
king g8 only move and now knight e4 and white wins and this is exactly how my game went so after knight e4 black can basically resign uh if you take the knight you lose the queen if you move the queen for example queen c4 then knight g5 uh, this threatens summate in one so you have to move your rook away so for example rook to d8 queen h7 king f8 queen h8 here here the rook has to go back to f8 and now you simply get your other pieces into play rook d1 uh, ideally you want to you want to do this at some moment or you want to do this or you want to do this and queen your pawn this position is completely winning uh, my opponent didn't uh, take the knight didn't move the queen he played I, what I'm going to say is the lesser evil move, he played pawn to g6, this just loses two pawns and the, the game is over, knight takes c5, g takes h5, knight takes bishop, threatening to win the exchange, he played rook c8, I played knight f6 check, king h8, knight takes h5, two pawns up with a perfect pawn structure, game over. Let me just show you what happens on knight takes d7 if they take with the queen. If they take with the queen, what you have to bear in mind is this line with g6. If we try to do the same thing, so bishop takes, queen takes, pawn takes, queen takes, bishop h7, king h7, queen h5, king g8, knight e4. If they go g6 now, there's no bishop on d7, so you don't get your piece back. So taking the queen would actually be a blunder, because now you are a bishop down. So what you have to do in this position is actually go for a draw with queen g5. And after queen e7, knight f6 check, this is just a draw. Obviously, if, if they make a mistake and go, for example, king to h8, then fine, it's checkmate, but they're not going to hang mate. So if they do take uh, with the queen, you have to go for something else. Okay, but yeah, in my game, he took with the bishop, and as I said, I got... A completely winning position, got my trap in, and was two pawns up. Uh, I'm going to show you the conversion. It wasn't easy. It's, I mean, it's not an automatic win, even though you're two pawns up. So you still have to work for this, and let me show you how I did that. My opponent played knight e5, uh, wants to play knight to d3, uh, attacking my b2 pawn, and then attacking my c3 pawn if I play b3. So I played king e2, preventing knight d3, rook c7, wants to double up rooks, rook h to d1, rook ac8, knight f4, and I want to basically challenge his knight, I want to trade off the knight. If I can trade off knights, then it's an easy win. b5, a3, preventing b4, a5, knight d3, and my idea was to get his knight into c4 because there's no other square basically and once he plays knight c4 i go b4 if he exchanges that's fine if he moves the knight i go knight c5 and now his rooks are neutralized and the game just became very easy i basically have a passed pawn on the h file a second passed pawn on the g file if i can advance my king side pawns and all I have to do is trade off pieces and win. Knight b7 played, that's perfect, take it. Rook takes, king d2 defending my only weakness on c3, rook bc7, rook dc1. Uh, I don't want to play my a rook to c1 because he may take b, uh, a b4 and then I want to be able to challenge the a file, a4. Now this makes things even easier, now I know where the battle is going to be fought. Uh, obviously, uh, I have a problem on the c4 square. So what I have to do uh, when the time is right, I have to play rook d1, rook d4 to challenge his rook on c4. But obviously, I cannot do that while he's still attacking c3 twice. So I still have to take things slowly. So rook c2. I want to get my a rook into play. It's useless on the a file now. And yeah, my c2 rook has to keep defending. So king g7. Rook e1. I thought about playing e4, uh, but I, I wanted to prepare it with f3 first. Rook c4, fine, expected. f3, rook h4, h3, f5. Okay, now it's getting slightly easier. Now I could play f4 straight away, uh, but if I go f4, then the position becomes too blocked. And if I ever go g4, then my h3 pawn is weak. So I have to take it slow. 
king d3, rook d8, rook d1, I want to fight against e5, d4, rook c4, king d2, I want to be defending my pawn on, on g2, rook d8, uh, rook d3, fine, king f6, king d2, and now once I've defended my pawn twice, uh, my c3 pawn twice, I decided to just get my king to b2, if possible, uh, and defend with my king while having my c2 rook defending g2 and while having my d3 rook free to go to d4 and to exchange itself for the c4 rook. As I said earlier, if I can challenge the c4 square, then I just win. Rook g8, king c1, rook d8, rook d4. And now it's easy. If he retreats the rook, I infiltrate on h4, play g4, uh, easily win with two passed pawns. He tried e5, rook c4, bc4, rook d2. Again, I don't want to allow d4. Now I have a passed pawn. <clears throat> he played king e6. And in this position, I missed an easy win. Uh, and, and this win is actually not even about calculation. It's about understanding how you're going to win this position. Okay, I have two passed pawns, one on the B file, one on the H file. Uh, one fact that's very true in this position is that if we trade rooks, I win on the spot. The pawn endgame is just completely over. Even if one of these pawns, the H pawn or the B pawn, gets off the board. So what I can do to win is just B5. And just push both my pawns. If rook B8, well, sorry, if, if rook B8, then rook b2, let's say he tries f4, I take it, ef, ef, b6, rook b7, and now simply h4. And there is no way for him to prevent both pawns from queening. Uh, if he tries to win the b pawn, I exchange rooks, queen my h pawn, game over. If he blockades the h pawn with his king, I just go rook here and start taking everything. Yeah, instead of that, I played f4. Uh, to block things up uh, because I saw a win. I saw a win, not the most pretty win. e4, king d1, and now everything is closed. d4 is never happening. Uh, he can never win in the center on, on the queen side, and all I have to do is win with my g and h pawns. Rook g8, king e1, king d6, king f2, rook h8, rook d1. I want to play rook h1 and g3 and g4. King e6, rook h1, king f6, g3. Rook g8, and now this is the only position I had to calculate for a long time. I think I'd spent maybe 20 minutes in this position. I mean, it's a winning endgame, but you still have to win it. So, if I ever allow his rook to infiltrate on the h file, these two pawns could drop. If one of these two pawns drops, then he has a passed pawn, either on c4 or on a4. So I still have to be careful. But I calculated everything correctly. I played g4, fg4, obviously I don't want to give up a pawn, so I play rook g1. And here's the issue, he plays rook h8, and I take, and he is infiltrating. I cannot prevent him from infiltrating either on the first rank or on the second rank. If I move my king, he plays rook c2. If I play rook g2, he plays rook h1. But here's the point. I'm simply quicker because I'm queening with tempo on basically every second move. So I play g5 check. If he plays king f5 uh, to try and blockade, then just g6. And his rook is not infiltrating ever. Just g7, rook g8, and then b5. And the same story, two passed pawns, just queening. So against g5, he has to play king g6. But now, again, I queen with tempo, f5, check. If this pawn is taken, same story as before, uh, just g6. Again, the rook has to go back, g7, rook g8, and again b5. The fact that the f pawn is not on the board that doesn't matter at all. So f5, he has to go back, king g7, uh, rook g1. This is unnecessary, but I figured why not. Rook h2, and king to g3. I can allow him to infiltrate and queening with tempo. Rook c2, king f4, rook takes c3, g6. He, he is way too slow. Rook d3, f6 check. Again, if the pawn is taken, I just queen in two moves. King f6, g7. Uh, so he played king g8. I played g7. Be careful not to play f7 here because then 
you're not queening. <clears throat> so g7, c3, and f7 check was the final move of the game. He resigned because I'm going to make a queen with check on the next move. So yeah, I got to play a trap in the London system, which, I mean, when I learn an opening, I always learn all the easy ways to win. It's just that I never got to play them until this game. So a great start with the London system, and I was really happy to get it in. I mean, I got the most famous trap in the first time I played the opening. Uh, thank you for watching, guys. I hope you learned something new. If you didn't know this trap, well, you, you should know it, regardless of whether you play London system or not, because you're going to be facing the London pretty much whatever you play. Okay, uh, thanks, guys. Stay tuned for more chess. Bye-bye.